These five things have been absolute game changers for my photos and videos. But fair warning, you're not gonna be able to unsee them as soon as you understand them from here on out. There's a bonus tip at the very end that you're not gonna wanna miss. Number one, we're calling this fill the frame. Now look, negative space can be really powerful and you can use that creatively at times, but to draw the viewer in, you're gonna want to get close up in on what you want them to actually be paying attention to. Typically when you're newer, you're trying to show off the entire scene as well as a subject somewhere in there, but I can tell you, the closer you get, better action. The viewer doesn't have to guess at all about what you want them to look at, so don't be afraid to get a little bit tighter and fill the frame. Number two, the rule of thirds. You might be familiar with this or may have heard it before. If you go onto your smartphone or your camera, you can typically turn on this grid. And the human eye is naturally gonna be drawn to the apexes, the corners of where these sections meet. Something like this tends to be a little bit more natural and absorbable for the consumer as opposed to centering up like this. And when we're starting out, we typically wanna center up the shot because it feels more symmetrical. Yeah, elephant in the room, this shot, I'm centered up. Straight on YouTube style shot, I want some space on the sides for graphics, but other shots that I do, like a podcast for example, I'm gonna be using the rule of thirds. So whether that's a person or an object, more times than not, using the rule of thirds and putting that subject on the corners of these grid lines is gonna be something that takes your stuff to the next level pretty quickly. Number three, looking room. This is gonna work when your subject is a person and they're looking in a direction off of the frame. Not straight on, but looking in a direction. You wanna make sure that the direction that they're looking is the same direction that has the most amount of space on the frame. This is gonna be the most natural way and the least jarring way for somebody to consume the image. Real quick, if you're getting something from this video and we haven't even got to the best parts yet, go ahead and give it a tap on the thumbs up. And if you're really feeling it, go ahead and triple tap that thumbs up. Number four, straight horizons. When you're shooting and there's a horizon, doesn't have to be mountains or something landscape, could be really anything. A seam in the wall, a seam on a desk. You want that horizon to be straight. In post-processing, both in photo and video, it is pretty easy to straighten that out. However, sometimes that can make your subject maybe a bit tilted. So what I've found is it's best to start seeing the horizons in the shot and make sure you get those straight in camera. Oh, and if you have a person in the shot, make sure that horizon's not cutting off their head. Well, again, once you see some of the stuff, you can't unsee it. What you wanna try to do in that situation instead is try to find an angle where you can get their head somewhere in the negative space in the shot, so that way, again, that horizon's not directly cutting off their head. Number five is framing. Very often you can find an angle where you can take your subject, whether it's an angle or reposition your subject to where they're framed up by something in the shot. Makes it look symmetrical and really draws the eye directly to the subject. This is one that's really simple and it can make your images look really good, really fast. In most cases, these are easier to do for photos than they are with videos simply because photos are still, videos have a lot more movement and dynamics to them. They're gonna make it more challenging, not impossible, good things to still aim for. And to all my fitness professionals out there, why is this important? Whether you're doing your own personal branding on social media or for your website, or you're doing client testimonials, you want the message to be heard. And the less jarring the image, the better chance you have of that occurring. With that being said, here's the bonus tip. Story matters more than anything I just said. The quality, and you can do this on a smartphone, it doesn't have to be a high grade camera, the quality of the image with these basic principles is gonna help the story be heard because the person watching it isn't gonna feel as though the image is jarring. As an example, here's a testimonial that I shot recently. If I had it like this, the viewer might be looking at that saying, you know, this doesn't feel right. It feels kind of crammed on this side of the screen. And maybe because of that, they're distracted. They're not hearing the message, which is the most important piece. But if we pull that over to a better shot, like the rule of thirds, they're not gonna be thinking about that stuff and they're gonna hear the story, which again is the most important anyways, but this stuff is certainly a factor in making these things absorbable. So if you're able to start to get used to these five things, 
Fill the frame, the rule of thirds, looking room, straight horizons, and framing. If you can start to do this more frequently, your images are gonna drastically improve. If you start to use some of this stuff, tag me in social media. I'd love to see some of your work. And if you want your videos to have a similar look to what you're seeing here with this stylized look, you can check out my LUTs in the link down below. And I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the YouTube robots just kind of pick a video that I've done in the past that it thinks is gonna be the best fit for you. So you can check that out there. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. See ya.